Hey Z Stars, what it do, what it do, what's good, what's good? I hope you all are enjoying our new name. This is our second time using it, but let me know still in the comments below. Do you guys like this name? So guys, welcome back to our channel, Zara Nicola TV. Today I want to do a video, I promise you guys, because we got 2,000 likes, so yay! Congratulations, we're actually doing a video where I show you guys how to use some non-hair product products on your hair. Let's get right into the video. This one is gonna be about henna. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Let's get this video to at least 2,500 likes. It'll let me know that you guys like this series and I'll be sure to release another video talking all about my non-hair product products. After that, make sure you share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know if you guys like this video. Let me know if you use henna. Let me know how you intend to use henna if you're finna use it after this video. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, please subscribe to our channel. I don't know what you're doing if you're not subscribed. And it would mean so much to us if you guys joined our family, became one of the Z stars, hashtag dream girl, hashtag African Barbie or African Ken, either one. I know there are guys that watch this channel. And of course, don't forget to turn your notifications on so you know every time we post a new video, you'll never miss us. And I mean, you'll get to be up to date with all our gist and whatnot, <laughs> no pun intended. Anyway guys, that's enough of my rambling. Let's get right into the video. Thank you so much. Okay everyone, so this is not only related to the video I just dropped about, you know, our non-hair product products. This is also related to a video I made a few weeks ago about how I low-key want to just chop off my hair. I've been experiencing blitz, breakage, and some other unsavory things. And low key, I might still snip it off if I don't like it in six months. Obviously, that's like no bueno. In that video, if you remember, and if you haven't watched it, you may as well watch it right here. I spoke about how I want to try a few things to see if I can get my hair back on track. And one of those things happens to be henna. What I decided to do was gradually trim my hair and incorporate henna to stave off those kinds of negative effects. Now traditionally, henna is used for body art. It's also used for the hair. So really it kind of low key, lowest of low keys is a hair product, but it's not made specifically for the hair. Over time, many centuries ago, of course, it was discovered that it actually has extremely beneficial properties for use on the hair. As you can see, I'm fresh from my henna treatment. My hair's looking all juicy and whatnot. Ooh, girl length, yes. Show them the length. Ah, ah, ginger. Don't mind my dry Nigerian accent. So I've actually done two henna treatments within the past month. I've been sticking to that, you guys, because I'm really serious about trying to remedy my hair before making that leap and just chopping it off. I'm gonna give you guys a little description of what henna is and what it does. If you want a full video, let me know. We can do some serious research and talk about henna in depth, but I don't want to take up time explaining what henna is to you guys. I just want to touch on it briefly. Henna is a dye derived from the Lawsonia inermis plant. Henna is traditionally used in Southeast Asia, on the Indian subcontinent, in the Arab world, in Northern Africa, in the Horn of Africa. Henna has been around for centuries and became really popular with the dissemination of Ayurvedic practices to a large part of the world. So a lot of us natural hair gals use henna and other Ayurvedic herbs to aid our hair growth and length retention. How I use my henna was as a treatment to strengthen my hair. So guys, we spoke about my hair struggles and I gave you a little bit of background on henna. Now I wanna to explain to you guys why this may potentially be a match made in hair heaven. Can I hear the choir angel? These are the things that henna does. The major focus of the video is that it actually thickens the hair shaft. It deters breakage. It prevents blitting. It strengthens the hair shaft. It also deposits color and increases the shine of the hair. We're gonna focus really quickly on the things that are gonna really benefit me. Now my hair is already extremely dense. As you can see, there's a lot of hair on my head, but my hair, in spite of the fact that it's really, really dense, is also very fine strand to strand. For me, that equates to more easily broken pieces of hair, splits out of nowhere, <laughs> bars. So I was thinking, okay, let me add this henna to my regimen. It'll thicken my strands. Hopefully it deters blitz and breakage. The past two times I've used it, I've actually seen a really positive effect. We'll get into more of that later. 
Now with the shine, that's a very positive side effect. And of course, I'm really loving it, but not my priority. For those of you that have lighter hair or brown hair, as opposed to black hair, henna actually deposits a lot of color and it's a natural plant dye. I mixed my henna with hibiscus because I wanted the conditioning effects of the hibiscus. For other people who are looking for the color benefits of henna, hibiscus actually makes the hair kind of purple. It gives it a nice berry tone as opposed to the traditional auburn tone of henna. So guys, let's get straight into my application process because this is a full volume of me and my henna experience. It's like my big fat henna wedding, I don't know. <laughs> With the application process, prior to applying the henna, you need to do several things. Those several things include shampooing your hair and shampooing your hair. As for me, I like to shampoo my hair, separate it into its twist, make sure that it's pretty stripped. I like to give it a nice clarifying shampoo. That way the henna can really work its miracle. The first time I did this treatment, which was right before making that video about how I high key want to chop off my hair, I actually used tea to mix it because I had run out of my lemon juice concentrate and I'm not gonna squeeze like 20 lemons to make some henna. That's just not about to happen. I do not have that kind of time. <laughs> I did not do that. I just used some tea and I mixed it with my apple cider vinegar to make sure that it was nice and acidic. As I was mixing the tea, I probably put in about six or seven green tea bags in a really large bowl. After it cooled, I added the ACV to my henna straight away. So I let it sit overnight to then apply it to my hair. There are a few more things to note about henna. For my hair, it's fairly long, so I had to use about 400 grams of product. 400 grams? That doesn't sound like very much to me. Well, actually guys, it's kind of a lot and it's really, really messy. And it actually ended up not being enough, but that's because I used some really ratchet henna that I got from a place that I will not name and it was very very chunky it was actually really difficult to remove from my hair but I got by and the outcome was okay however this application I used 400 grams of henna again or rather let me clarify guys I used 300 grams of henna with 100 grams of hibiscus I did that last time sorry for the confusion and this time it stretched and stretched and stretched I actually had leftover and I think it's because this henna was really, really finely milled. It was so beautiful. And I used lemon juice. We're gonna get into why lemon juice is way better for me. Basically, my hair is super duper low porosity. So if you put anything very acidic on my hair, my hair's gonna be like, girl, it's like you really like us or something. What's going on, girl? This is like so nice. <laughs> so that's basically my hair's response to anything extremely acidic. Using the lemon juice made my hair feel so smooth. It defined it immediately and made the henna go on way better than it would have had I used the tea like I did the initial time. Now again, this henna was really, really finely milled, so I feel like that probably had a super positive effect on the outcome of this particular application. After these two applications, I can say with undeniable confidence that lemon, henna, and hibiscus are the perfect combination for me. If you're also low porosity and super protein sensitive like me, then this is probably going to be an exceptional henna combination for you as well. But I must warn you, all of my protein sensitive and low porosity naturals out there, henna can be a really Really, really heavy treatment it can almost be like a super duper protein treatment so you need to be careful with the application we're going to get more into that later but I just want to warn you guys so that you know as we're going through the video so you all after mixing my henna and allowing it to sit overnight to allow the dye to release I put it on my hair and left it on for about eight hours I would have left it on overnight but everything in my room is white and I'm not gonna deal with that dye struggle I'm trying to get that off my sheets and my pillows and ish so nah we just left it in during the day and rinsed it off before I went to bed. <laughs> Okay guys, so I just wanted to briefly come on and talk about exactly how I'm applying the henna. I just wanted to give you guys some very specific details. So as you can see, I'm wearing gloves because we talked about the lossum in the henna actually lending color to the hair, the skin, nails, etc. And I don't want that color on my hands, so I'm wearing gloves to apply the henna since the dye has fully released and now it's potent enough to bond to the hair. So what I'm doing now is I'm just raking it through my hair. In fact, I'm not even really raking it. I'm smoothing it very, very gently through my hair, taking my time to really hit my roots because it's very easy to miss the roots and especially the ends of my hair because the ends are the oldest part of the hair and require the most attention. So that's just what I'm doing. I'm leaving my hair in the sections that it was in while I was washing it. Of course, I like to keep my hair very organized and I don't need it to tangle upon itself or break. So I'm sure to do most things I do with it in sections. 
the first time I did my henna application, it was super duper messy. Of course, it's because I used some really ratchet henna. That was definitely a factor. But this time I was extremely careful. I applied it very deliberately and I actually made my henna a bit more pasty. So instead of flying around everywhere, I think it was really just staying attached to my hair. I was also careful to make sure that I was getting the henna off the back of my hands. Shout out to Will Money for giving me that reminder every time because Lord knows the henna was just piling up behind my fingers and it was becoming a really hot mess but I made sure to get that off so I wasn't wasting any product. The lemon kept my hair really smooth and my hair responded extremely well to that very acidic liquid. Following the successful application of the henna, what I did was apply some saran wrap so that the heat from my scalp and the rest of my body could actually help the lossum to bind to my hair better and also to prevent a whole bunch of mess because like I said, everything in my room's white and I'm not finna get this dye anywhere because it's about to be too much headache. So that's exactly how I applied my henna. Let's keep going with the rest of the video, you guys. hours later to remove it from my hair what i did was i dipped my head in a bucket full of water this is actually something i learned years and years ago from Curly Nikki's website. Super effective, so if you're doing henna, I highly recommend you approach it that way. Get a bucket, or maybe fill up your bathtub even, but I think a bucket is probably better, especially if you're in California or a drier place where there are droughts, so you can preserve water and save the planet. But yeah, just dip your head in a bucket, swish it around, pour the water out, do that maybe two or three more times. By that time, you'll have gotten most of the product out, so you can actually just hop in your shower and rinse out the rest with a very cheap conditioner. After removing the henna from my hair, I was really shocked. I was like, wow, my hair is feeling like really silky, really smooth, and it's much thicker. The thickening effect is actually very, very immediate. And I've noticed that with these past two treatments, my hair has gotten fuller. And like I said, you guys, it's already extremely dense, but because the henna, the lossum is binding to the strands of my hair, I'm quite certain that it's thickening each strand and just making my hair seem even denser. So imagine a head of dense hair and then thick strands. That's like, oh my gosh, like heaven, guys. After I finished rinsing out my henna with my really, really cheap, super inexpensive throwaway conditioner that actually is not really that great, I added my favorite deep conditioner. Well, really, I actually just use it as a deep conditioner. It's not a deep conditioner. It's my Aussie Moist. And what I did was I left that in my hair because the previous application of henna I had done, I noticed that my hair was super duper dry and thirsty. And that's where we get into the shock effect. So let's take a moment to talk about that. So if you're a protein sensitive natural, which I know a lot of you are, or low porosity, which I also know a lot of you are, then henna has the potential to shock your hair. For me, it made my hair extremely dry the first time I did it. And the deep conditioner I used was not nearly potent enough. This time around, I used my Aussie Moist and used it as a deep conditioner. I then put oil over top after I left it in my hair for many, many hours, really more out of laziness, only to discover later that it was really, really soft as a result of that combination. I left the conditioner in for a while. With each passing hour, I noticed the softness of my hair returning very rapidly. I highly recommend doing it like that. If you're like me and you have protein sensitive and or low porosity hair, this might counteract that shock. And I know it definitely did for me. As I'm touching my hair now, it feels extremely soft. So I'm definitely going to adopt that for my subsequent henna application. No more using a deep conditioner that's not effective enough. I'm actually going to make sure I use something as creamy and slippery as my Aussie Moist and combine it with my favorite hair oil. That way my hair can just return to equilibrium. So you guys, following the rinse out of all of this product, I just did my normal hair routine, you know, nothing too crazy. I simply moisturized my hair with a leave-in and then put my oil in, put some butter on the ends. If you guys wanna see what happens after this hairstyle, it's either that I release my hair and get a bomb twist out. I'm gonna put that video right here. Or I put my hair in a very sleek bun, middle part all the time because there's just a lot of hair, you guys. I can't be doing the whole side part thing. It's just too much stress. <laughs> and I'll put that video right here. It's probably the easiest sleek bun ever. But yeah, you guys, that's how I approach my henna routine. Really, really fantastic, super convenient, and I'm really reaping the benefit from this. So in summary of everything we talked about, henna is really fantastic. 
It prevents breakage, deters splits, thickens the hair, which is our primary focus because it's not everybody that be struggling with splits and breakage. It also deposits really beautiful color depending on the color of your hair and it increases the shine of the hair. So if you're like me, protein sensitive and low porosity, I highly recommend mixing your henna with lemon and then also hibiscus so there's more conditioning and less of a shock to your hair. Don't forget to deep condition with something super creamy and add an oil in there so that your hair can return to its equilibrium. If your hair loves protein, loves all sorts of treatments, and can take this treatment, you know, like a champ, then you can consider using tea. It's really great for preventing breakage and also for reducing shedding. So again, remember that this is a very messy process. It stains everywhere. My hands are actually still stained from my henna treatment. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me show you guys what's going on there. But all in all, it's very much worth it. And I'm excited to take you guys on this new henna journey. Who knows, in the future, I might just give you guys some more application mixes. Let me know if you guys wanna see those types of videos in the comments below, and let me know what you put in your henna and how you mix it, how you apply it, etc., etc. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been really fun sharing with you guys this new part of my hair journey. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Share this video with all your friends and your loved ones. Comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to get to 2,500 likes so that we can do the next one. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, please subscribe to our channel. I don't know what you're doing if you're not subscribed. And turn your notifications on so you know every time we post a new video. Shout out to all my Z stars out there. You guys are the realest. I hope this video was very clear. I'm going to put a lot of details in the description box and I'm going to give you guys links to where you can purchase the things I use in my henna. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.